No one's knocking me out. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm a scouser. We don't get knocked out. This guy is Patrick Mark Pimblet. He is the people's main event. AKA Patty the Batty Pimblet. AKA one of the biggest stars in the UFC. He's not your typical intimidating fighting sensation. He's a proud English boy with an affinity for exciting highlight reel finishes and an even higher affinity for the indulgence of fine cuisine. Why would I want bacon or sausage? I want bacon and sausage. <laughs> His authenticity and carefree attitude translates into fun and memorable moments on the microphone. Is there a chance you twerk over him if he gets- I want a teabag him, lad. I want a teabag him like a Modern Warfare 2. Which has garnered him a following that most UFC fighters will never be able to achieve. But behind the funny hairdo, thick accent, and hilarious personality- My dog's just had like a sloppy sh** outside. I was just wondering if he got some water. I don't want to leave it. Is the journey of a young boy who dreamed of getting championship titles. I am going to be the pound for pound best in the world this time in five years. And never dreamed that he would go from exciting UFC stand out to a dividing and controversial figure. Daddy, that was a close one. No, it wasn't. That wasn't close. This is a story of conquest, hilarity, and tragedy. This is how Patty the Batty Pimblet became a fan favorite and fan hated UFC megastar. Patty Pimblet grew up in Highton, a town bordering the Liverpool suburbs in England. He wasn't a particularly good student, frequently getting kicked in and out of school. The young lad was still trying to find himself. And luckily, destiny came calling when Patty happened to come across a Hall of Fame UFC fight in real time. Diego Sanchez and Clay Guida met at the Ultimate Fighter Season 9 finale and slugged it out for three rounds straight, with Diego Sanchez winning via split decision and the fight being inducted into the Hall of Fame many years later. Patty loved the fight and credits it with being the bout that got him hooked on MMA. He began his training a few months later and soon after that signed for his first amateur fight. What's your name? Bobby Pillman. Do you have a fight nickname? He was clearly more soft-spoken in his youth, but still very confident in his abilities. I want to watch your prediction then for us. I'm gonna win. Okay. By by submission knockout. And with that, a young Patrick made his amateur MMA debut on September 11th, 2011. Patty may not have looked very intimidating or even very excited to be in the cage, but he was very eager to take his opponents back and secure a beautiful rear naked choke finish. Good things were in store for Patty as he would go on to have a few more amateur fights, earning a bantamweight title and defending it. But being an amateur wasn't enough, so in 2012, Patty made his professional MMA debut. Patty dominated not only the grappling exchanges, but was able to rain down so much ferocious ground and pound. And the impact was too much for his opponent, who tapped to strikes in the first round. And after two more exciting finishes, Pimblet made his Cage Warriors debut in 2013. Patty, the Patty you may know Cage Warriors as the ultra-popular European promotion that has given us stars like Conor McGregor and Michael Bisping. And Patty would be no different, getting a decision win in his first fight with the promotion. Patty! The Betty Pimblet! However, a 4-0 Pimblet finally met his match at Cage Warriors 60, where in just under 35 seconds, Pimblet was submitted unconscious via Anaconda Choke. He's looking pretty tired at the moment. Well, I think he stopped and the he's out. That is it, he actually said that is exactly what he was gonna do. That would waver the confidence of any 18 year old fighter, but it actually inspired Patty to come back better than ever. Actually went completely unconscious against uh, Cameron Ellis in the, the first round of that fight back in October. So as you mentioned, a lot to come back from now. After two more fights and a sensational first round triangle armbar, Patty made his featherweight debut against Stephen Martin. And despite being quickly dropped, Patty recovered and delivered a vicious elbow that cut open Martin and secured a doctor stoppage victory. My TKO victory, Patty! The Betty Pimblet! After this fight, Patty took a short detour from Cage Warriors to go to Full Contact Contender, where a second round rear naked choke earned him the vacant featherweight championship.
and a few months later he defended his title with a first round submission victory. And there's the submission! Patty Pimlet with the big squeeze! Patty was really coming into his own as a professional, but a full contact championship was nowhere near as prestigious as a Cage Warriors title. But before Patty's next title shot, consider subscribing to not only my YouTube channel, but also my podcast, The MMA Pod, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I have way more content coming soon that you don't want to miss. Now back to the video. Pimlet returned to Cage Warriors in 2016, securing two more impressive victories. With a big squeeze! It was always gonna be a masterclass from the body though, wasn't it? Never happen any other way, you know that. This impressive win streak finally earned him a vacant featherweight title shot in Cage Warriors across Johnny Fershea. And with not a second wasted, Paddy finished his opponent in just over 90 seconds to become the featherweight champion. Big right hand! Paddy He's done it! Paddy Pimblet is the new Cage Warriors featherweight champion of the world! Featherweight champion, what does that sound to you? That sound like to you? It was inevitable, wasn't it? Where do you see yourself five years from now? What do you want out of your career, Paddy? I am going to be the pound for pound best in the world this time in five years. Paddy was certainly on top of the world, but a true champion defends the title. So a few months later, Paddy would stand across former UFC fighter Julian Arosa to test his championship chops. But in what became a highly controversial decision, Paddy got the judges' nod to retain his title. Still! And Patty, of course, defended the outcome. I don't understand how people can even contemplate the fact I lost the fight. I just don't understand it. I've watched the fight back and I think I won the fifth round. I think I won one, two, three, and five. But I don't understand what he does in the fifth to take that round off me. But for those fans who thought he lost, they would soon see justice. Because despite having the title and all the hype in the world, Patty's next opponent was undeterred, giving Patty a lot of trouble in both the stand up and grappling exchanges throughout the fight, doing enough to secure a decision victory and end the title reign of Patty the Batty. New Cage Warriors featherweight champion! But Patty's unwavering confidence and sky-high aspirations turned his head to a brand new weight class. He weighed in exactly on the lightweight limit of 155 pounds. Patty made his lightweight debut in 2018. And what better way to make a statement than with a flying triangle in round two? The angle has got the exception! And there's a submission! The fans and Cage Warriors couldn't get enough of their sensational star. What's next for you? I want this lightweight belt. Even the UFC wanted to sign Patty, but he turned them down for a more lucrative Cage Warriors deal. And what better way for Cage Warriors to reward their star than with another title shot? This bout is for the vacant Cage Warriors lightweight title. Yes, Patty Pimblett's next fight would be a vacant title shot, this time at lightweight against Soren Bach. And very quickly into the first round, Patty took Bach's back and nearly submitted his opponent. Patty Pimblett squeezing for all his work! Is he gonna do he's, it? he's got this locked. He has got this locked. Back is gonna go out here. But somehow Box survived, and for the remainder of the fight, even dominated Pimplet in many exchanges, which earned him a clear decision and spoiled Patty's double champion aspirations. Sorum, the true Viking. However, as we know with Patty by now, he has an inexplicable ability to come back better than ever. Another go. In his last two Cage Warriors fights, Patty secured two beautiful first round finishes to put himself in the right position to get picked up by the leader in mixed martial arts. Patty the Batty Pimblet, who on Monday was officially announced has joined the UFC roster, a lot to talk to him about. You are officially on your way to your first fight. It was always inevitable that I was going to sign for the UFC. So I'm going to be making waves, lad, soon as. The biggest signing since, since the main Irishman, this one. Did you expect this this level of interest in in your first fight in the UFC? Yeah, everyone wants to know the body lad. With all the media and fans behind him, Patty had to perform, and oh boy, did he deliver! Patty, the Patty Pimblet. In his first UFC fight in 2021, Patty faced some early adversity opposite Luigi Vendramini. Mini corner. Oh! 
getting his chin checked and taking some ground and pound. But Patty quickly recovered to deliver a barrage of punches that earned him a first round knockout victory. And his post-fight interview was more than memorable. Well, I'll tell you what happened. You almost got knocked out. You got caught with a beautiful left hook. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And you finished in style. You know me saying, lad? I'm a scouser. We don't get knocked out. Hey, I take that shit all day. With a bonus earning performance like that and the personality to follow, Patty's notoriety was as high as it ever was. Is, is that probably the, the perfect way to debut, you think? Yeah. 100%. Gaining more fans and more media attention than ever before. I've got the personality, I've got the look. The new, the new kings here, lad. I mean, just the month after the fight, he signed a $1 million endorsement deal with Barstool Sports. That was only his first UFC fight, and it was already apparent that the sky was the limit. So, what was next? I'm just focusing on Rodrigo Vargas, and once I take his head clean off, I'll be able to chill for a few weeks and then I'll have a new target and I'll keep climbing the ladder that way. As you say, I'm, I'm built for this. I was put on this air for this to fight and entertain people and I'm going to continue to do it tomorrow night. Describe yourself to those fans and why they should tune in to see you fight anytime you get in the octagon. I just, I'm just real. I don't try and be anything I'm not and I think people love me for that. Well, he may not be billed as the main or co-main event tonight, but I can assure you he is the people's main event. Patty's next UFC opportunity came six months later at UFC London in March 2022. And it was apparent from the crowd that the O2 Arena was his house. And with the roar of the fans surrounding the octagon, Patty secured a first round submission victory over Rodrigo Vargas to ignite the crowd and explode into a full-fledged UFC superstar. He had everything you'd want in a fighting megastar. Patty! 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 That was gangster. Yeah, that was sick, lad. I said what was going to happen, lad, and it happened. I looked a bit shit at the start, like, but, you know, I'm never in a boredom fight, am I? Listen, it's real. This kid's got a ton of, a ton of hype behind him, and tonight he showed everybody that He's the real deal. And fans started to get more and more exposed to Patty's personality. Lad, the funny thing is that the haters are going to hate still. Lad. Oh, you couldn't even take him down. You got hit with a big punch. Uh, your defense is shit, But who won? You know what I mean? Who won, lad? It was me in the first round. We learned about his thoughts towards Jake Paul. Well, what do you think about Jake Paul, YouTuber turned fighter? He's a sausage. We learned what he thinks about the American breakfast. The one thing what pisses me off in America, though, is how shit your breakfasts are. Well, lad, your breakfasts are f dog sh two eggs any style, and bacon or sausage. Why would I want bacon or sausage? I want bacon and sausage. <laughs> and we even learned about how considerate he is when his dog poops on your property. Hello, love. Um, it should, my dog's just had like a sloppy sh outside. I was just wondering if you got some water. I don't want to leave it outside. Stop talking about it is, I feel, I feel terrible, you <laughs> know what I mean? No, it's all right. It's just had a proper sloppy shit and I can't even pick it up with the poo bag, you know what I mean? Fans got more and more exposure to Patty Pimblett and loved every minute of them. Normal dancer. It just happens for me that I don't plan any of it, it just happens. None of mine's rehearsed. I've well done that one, and then it's just like, what the f <laughs> and his personality translated well ahead of his next UFC fight. I didn't mind him, lad, before the fight got announced, don't I mean? But he's been talking all sorts of crazy shit, lad. Plan is still to knock him out and twerk on him afterwards? Yeah, finish the fight, twerk, go home. Yeah, he's trying just trying to get in my head, being a little weirdo like he is, but no one can out-weird me. I'm weirder than anyone. No one knew who he was before he fought me. I got an interview before, and he got called Justin Levy by the interviewer. That's how much of a no one he is. Is there a chance you twerk over him if he gets I'm gonna teabag him, lad. I'm gonna teabag him like it's Modern Warfare 2. But this hilarious trash talk meant nothing if Paddy couldn't deliver. After winning the first round, Patty wanted to make a statement, hitting Jordan with a powerful knee. Oh, nice knee! Big knee! Oh, that'll help it. Taking the fight to the ground and securing a sensational rear naked choke victory. This is it! That's time!
and of course delivering on his teabag promise. But his heartwarming post-fight speech to bring awareness to men's mental health issues really stole the show and gave us a side of Patty we'd never seen before. There's a stigma in this world that men can't talk. Listen, if you're a man and you've got weight on your shoulders and you think the only way you can solve this by yourself, please speak to someone, speak to anyone. I know I'd rather have me make cry on my shoulder than go to his funeral next week. So please, let's get rid of this stigma and men start talking. This vulnerable and humble moment was so beautiful to see in such a violent and unforgiving sport. But for many fans, this was overshadowed by his attitude during his upcoming controversy. But before we get to Patty's next fight, we have to talk about his weight. What do you make of the fact that he blows up and blows down in between fights? It's not good for you, you know? I mean, we all know that. We know that fluctuating and cutting that much weight is, is very bad. More you need to ask Dana going on in the world that you've got to ask him about my ways. It's getting f old now, lad. In between camps, fans became aware of the fact that Paddy Pimblet gains a lot of weight, getting as high as 205 pounds. He just gets gotta lose so it. big. He gets so big, his big pie face. <laughs> and I, We've never seen a UFC fighter, let alone like a, a star, like celebrate putting on insane amounts of weight. Definitely doesn't prolong your career you know it's it, it's tough on your body and, and and your organs and stuff like that but listen he's a grown man he can he can do whatever the hell he wants to do if you're going out of camp and you're getting up to 200 pounds to 210 and you're getting that big you're not in the training room which is particularly dangerous when you consider that he fights at 155 pounds you know it makes it tough for us too because when we're in the in the matchmaking room we want to throw together a fight maybe maybe, maybe we could throw him on a card in a month month and a half it hurts us too. We have to be very specific when we plan fights for him because he's not he's nowhere near close to weight. And while Patty does treat the situation as all fun and games, even saying that he is fat and happy. For everyone commenting on me weight, I'm fat and happy. End of. It's a truly concerning circumstance when you realize he's opened up about his eating habits. I think I've got a bit of an eating disorder because of because of MMA. The reason Paddy the Batty gets as big as he is because it's like you get this dis mental disorder. I just will see it later because we're going to watch the UFC later tonight. Yeah. If there's food in there, you just will be like, she's so still eating. You know what I mean? People like when they go and eat with me, they're like, yeah. they're like visibly shocked. Yeah. How much I can eat. The lad clearly likes to eat, but his camps seem to progressively become more about cutting weight rather than preparing for his opponent. His fights are like fat camps. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're really not like training camps where you're going over skills as much as he's just, he's got very good skills. Yeah. But now he's just trying to lose weight. And it has prompted the MMA community to ponder how sustainable is this? In the past, I've done big, I've done 19 pounds overnight. But considering that he hasn't missed weight and hasn't lost in the UFC, it's hard to judge how it affects his performance. And speaking of performance, Paddy's greatest controversy was yet to come. Paddy's next fight would be against Jared Gordon at UFC 282. He's unpredictable, you know, he brings uh, his own style to the cage and that's what intrigues me. Is your prediction first round stoppage? Yeah, as always. So what's gonna happen? I'm gonna drown him. Leading up to the fight, Paddy seemed less concerned about fighting Jared Gordon, instead being more concerned with having hotel scuffles against Ilya Toporia. I don't refer to him as his name, his name's hand sanitizer because it got bounced off his head. There was about six of them and he done none. If he wanted to do so, and he would have come around the table and tried to have a fight with me, but he didn't. He stood on the other side of the table because he knows what's good for him. Do something, stand up. What will you do? You'll do nothing. You'll do nothing, you little fart. Go and sit back down. Sit back down. But that was just for show because the number one thing in Patty's way was Jared Gordon. Patty! The Patty! In the opening round, Gordon clearly outstruck Pimblet, routinely finding a home for his left hand and pressuring Pimblet against the cage. And again, you can't miss with the left hand. He is finding a home for that beautiful left hook. After seeming to lose that round, Pimblet came into round two much more determined, outlanding Gordon but getting controlled for over two minutes. Good use the head physical. there by yeah. Jared Gordon. Yeah. Controlling that clinch position. It was a close round that could have gone to Patty, but the third round was a different story. Jared Gordon landed the more significant strikes, controlled the pacing of the round, and secured two takedowns and nearly four minutes of control time. Round to score. Tough fight to score. 
and by the time the bell rang, many fans were anticipating the announcement of Patty's first UFC loss. A strong clinch game in round three could very well be enough to give Jared Gordon the biggest win of his professional career. But to the surprise of pretty much everyone, Patty got the decision victory. Patty! And to add insult to injury, he was less than humble in his post-fight interview. Patty, that was a close one. No, it wasn't. That wasn't close. You don't think it was a close fight at all? Not at all. I won the first two rounds and then coasted in the third. I knew I was two rounds up, so I, went, I didn't want to do nothing dangerous and risk losing the fight. I knew for a fact I won the first two rounds pretty easily. The MMA community could not believe, nor could we justify the result of a fight that should have been very clear. I thought that I thought it was a close decision. And I thought Jared won. I thought I thought Jared Gordon won that fight. For my money, it was 30-27 or 29-28 for Jared Gordon. There's a lot of people seem to think Jared won all three. Yeah. Jared will win all three rounds. He didn't win any any round. Everyone in the our building was like, damn, Patty lost. This fight opened the eyes of many fans that Patty may not be the elite level fighter that they were led to believe. Jared was landing that left hook at will. Patty keeps moving his head back a lot. Other guys are going to start taking advantage of that. Though so I think Patty got a lot of work to do if he really wants to be a champion. And his inability to recognize the fault in his performance or even adjust his game plan mid fight left us wondering what is next for Patty Pimblett. Somebody has six and a half minutes of control time on me. I would, in my own position, wonder, okay, yeah, maybe I could see how you would think that the other person won. You don't see that at all from any others. No, I, th I don't, because... Because it's 15 minutes long. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying there. Um, the control time in the last round, yeah, he did. He controlled me against the fence, but he didn't do anything with it. When I've looked at the stats after the fight, I think I won all three. Fans really wanted Patty to fight soon after fighting Jared to gauge his ceiling. However, Patty made us aware that an ankle surgery would force him out of competition for the entirety of 2023. Now tell us why you're on crutches. Um, I had to get surgery after my last fight. I hit my foot in the first round, in like the first minute or two, through a kick hit it. I felt it like, but obviously... Has that impacted your plans for the rest of this year, your goals? And yeah. I'll be lucky to fight this year. So when he returns, who does he fight? And more importantly, does he get back in the fans' good graces? And ultimately, can he get back on track to achieve his dream of obtaining UFC gold? Let me know what you think down below. Like, subscribe, follow, do all the things, and I'll catch you in the next one.